Good morning, church. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? But we're excited that you're here. Go ahead and stand to your feet. Put your hands together. We are getting ready to declare the name of Jesus over all. Shelter through the night, and I am running to your name. It's a place where I can hide, and I will rest in you. Your grace is a force that speaks for me, and I am standing on your grace. It's given all authority. Through you, I've made me strong. Sing this with me. 
church I've tried so hard to see it It took me so long to believe it Hallelujah That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never what we don't deserve it. You take the broken things, raise them to glory. Sing us out. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand on the feet. Every battle. Every battle.
Anybody grateful for his victory? He's good. He provides everything we need. Amen. I'll have a bit more love than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I could do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Going through a storm, but I won't go down. I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me. So I wouldn't drown. You've never been closer than you are right now. Come on, sing it out. Oh, sing it out. Oh, Tyra, you are enough. You are. Tyra, you are enough. I will be content in every circumstance. So clear what it's all about So stay by my side When the sun goes down Don't want to forget how I feel right now Tyra, Tyra, you are I know that you are Tyra, you are
Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Oh, You're more than enough for me. You're more than enough for me. your mouth right now and just tell them that's what we came to church to do right is to glorify him come on set him on the throne of your life right now tell him that he's great that his grace is sufficient for you tell him that he's more than enough open up your mouth right now and just bless him thank you Jesus you're more than enough for me yes you're more than everything that we need I know that some people are going through something right now but he's here Emmanuel is here he's never left you he's not forsaken you and our God will supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus so we can praise him we can be confident we cannot be shaken because, Jeho because Jehovah Jireh cares for us. So thank you, Lord, for providing for us, for being our champion, for providing us a victory, for fighting our battles, for loving us, for taking care of us, there is nothing and no one like you, God. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. Amen? Church, amen? Amen! Come on, I need somebody whose needs have been taken care of by Jehovah Jireh to give him some praise right now. Come on, give him praise right now! You cannot get over the goodness of God. Man, he's so great. Mm. We got to get down. We're going to start some more. <laughs> Turn to someone and say, our God supplies all of our needs. All of them. You may be seated. Hey, man, good morning. Who's thankful to be in church today? Man, I'm about to explode. That was just, that time of worship, whoo, I needed that. I love the weather outside and how beautiful it is, but man, the weather in here, it's always better in the house of God, right? 
Gosh, I needed that today. So thank you so much for being here. We're so glad that you're here. My name is Tyler McNulty. I'm the youth pastor here. Thanks for uh, not staying outside in the nice weather, but coming in in the house of God and tuning in online. We're so glad that you're here. You know, tonight we are excited because tonight is our fall festival. Who's excited? Come on. I'm so excited for our fall festival. You know, I was talking with my daughter this week, and she was holding, she's three years old, my daughter Ella. She's holding her uh, Cinderella dress. I said, Ella, what's that? She said, Daddy, this is my Cinderella dress. I said, well, what are you going to do with that? She said, Daddy, I'm going to wear that to the fall festival. She didn't say fall festival. She says fall festival. And as a good dad, I just like to hear that, so I don't correct her, you know? I said, well, that's awesome. She said, Dad, Dad, will you go with me to the fall festival? <laughs> I said, I would love to go with you to the fall festival. That's what I want to ask you guys. Will you come with us to the fall festival tonight? Right? It's, like, it's going to be so much fun. We, you guys have seen the stage. We have live 80s music. Um, we're going to be or so much candy, funnel, cakes, um, amazing rides, games. We have all of that. It's free. There will be food trucks there that you can go get some food if you would like. Um, but we are so excited to come. And I believe that you guys are excited because I have talked to so many people that are saying, I'm bringing this person. I'm bringing my sister. I'm bringing my best friend. I'm bringing my neighbor. And we are really excited that you guys have decided to use your faith. Because tonight really doesn't matter if we don't use our faith and go reach one. Amen? So let's not give up. Let's, let's go this afternoon and let's invite one more person. Someone said no, let's go invite them again. Amen? Tonight, 6.30 to 8.30 will be our fall festival. We are so excited for that. Um, after the service today, around 12 o'clock, 11.30 to 12, we are going to have a lot of you guys have already said, hey, I want to help set up for the fall festival. If that's you, thank you so much. We're going to be right out back. We're going to eat pizza real quick because we love pizza. And then we're going to set up for the fall festival. If there's a few more of you that would like to join with that and help us, feel free to stay for a little bit. It's not going to take long, but we are going to set up for an amazing night. Um, we're going to get ready for our Connect card. You guys in your seats, if you grab that Connect card online, I'm going to start with you. We're so glad that you're here. We're so glad that you're watching. We're so glad that you are joining with us today, but I can't see your face. We can't see your face, but if you would fill out the Connect card, we could see your name and know that you are with us. So right there in the comments, you'll see the Connect card. Connect card. Um, there's also a QR code that you can use, or you can text MySCC to 484848. Just let us know that you are here and fill out as much information as you would like to give us. But for those of us that are in the room, there's a connect card in your chair. If everyone would, would grab that connect card, grab it for me real quick, find your connect card, and let's put it in the air and let's wave it. Let's show everyone, all right? Show your friends on the other side of the room. I got my connect card. You guys look so good today. Come on, a little cardio this morning. <laughs> If you guys would fill it out for us, thank you for uh, continuing to do that. The Connect Card is a great, um, just a great tool for you to use to grow in your walk with God. It lets us know that you are here. It really helps us uh, help you, but it really helps you grow in your walk with Jesus. So give us as much information as you feel comfortable with giving us. And then at the bottom, you'll see some next steps and a prayer request part. Fill as much of that as you would like to. We want to help you. We want to bless you. Also on those next steps, you'll see where it says, I would like to know more information about our grow track. Go ahead and check that if you haven't finished that or if you haven't started that. The grow track uh, is every Sunday for the first four Sundays of the month, but today is the fifth Sunday of the month. Some of us got an extra paycheck this month and all God's people said. <laughs> Right? So today we do not have our grow track. We will have that for us next week. It'll be at 1130 in person or online. You can join us as well. And speaking of online, do not forget to share the service. Um, man, I don't know about you, but I really needed church today. Did you guys need church today? Right? Whew. It's already blessed me. We haven't even gotten to the Word of God. So share that service. Someone that we know needs to be blessed by what God is doing, and God is going to speak over their life. So just take a minute to do that. Um, middle school students, we're about to head upstairs to the middle school service. So glad that you guys are here. But guys, come tonight, 6.30 to 8.30 to the Fall Festival. Love you. Welcome to South Point Community Church. Amen. Tonight is going to be amazing. I can't wait. My son was, he's, he's dressing up as Spider-Man. We decided to switch costumes with all our kids, my kids and Aaron's kids, and uh, save a little money. We're just switching costumes, so that's kind of, <laughs> hey, got to be economical. Amen. 
<laughs> so Nolan is no longer Batman this year, now he's Spider-Man. Hudson was Spider-Man last year, now Nolan's Spider-Man this year. So he's dressed up the other day showing me what he's going to come out of tonight. I can't wait. Uh, my dad is in Dubai. Um, he's at our Every Nation. He, uh, he's on the apostolic team for our Every Nation Ministries, and he'll be flying home on Thursday. So we look forward to having him back. Continue to pray for him. They're, they're making world decisions over in Dubai. So it's important that we pray for my dad, the pastor of this church, as he's over in Dubai with other missionaries, leaders all around the world. Every Nation is a global ministry. We're in pretty much every, almost every country, every nation. So we want to be praying for these leaders that God moves in wisdom in their lives. So I'm going to pray right now for them that God would just bless them and give them wisdom on where to move and how to build God's kingdom. Lord Jesus, thank you. For this amazing day, Lord God, just as Tyler was saying, that we get to enjoy this beautiful weather, a spiritual family. Thank you that we get to come together back tonight and uh, just have a blast, and we get to see the harvest of everyone coming that we've been inviting. Lord, I pray that you would bring breakthrough in Jesus' name and bring encouragement to us. Lord, bless my dad and all the pastors, the leaders on the apostolic team in every nation as they strategize, as they make important decisions that are going to affect uh, the globe, Lord God. I pray that you would anoint their wisdom, their leadership. Give them wisdom, Holy Spirit. Make them like Daniel. Lord God, give them wisdom uh, that is supernatural for building your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you'd bless today in Jesus' name. Be glorified. I pray that your word would penetrate into our hearts. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. <clears throat> well, today I am talking to you about prayer, and I thought it was uh, really fitting for Halloween. Last night I was on a prayer walk, and uh, I walked by a house, and it was filled with uh, skeletons, like crazy demons everywhere, all hanging up in the trees and stuff. And then, like, right in the middle of everything, it says, Jesus is Lord on a cross. And I'm like, you forgot to take down your Easter cross for Halloween. <laughs> I, was, I was like, man, I'm going to tear down all the rest of this stuff and leave the cross up. Jesus is Lord, amen? Even in the midst of all this crazy celebration of something we don't celebrate, but we get to celebrate Jesus tonight, amen? Amen. So we're, gonna, we're in Sermon on the Mount, continuing that. So we're in Matthew chapter 6 today. We're going to start in verse 1. I'm going to read 18 verses. All these are connected to each other. It says, beware, Jesus says, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. For they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room, shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows that you need what you need before you ask him. Pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven or Father forgive your trespasses. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, and their, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, 
but by your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. In the first century Mediterranean world, the world looked at honor as the definition of success. So as long as you looked good to others, as long as you looked good to the public, as long as in your social realm of influence, others looked up to you because of your righteous acts, you were considered successful. This is why the Pharisees in Jesus' day, the righteous ones, the ones who lived according to the law, were considered the ones that were successful. They lived with honor. They would do anything for the praise of man. This was a culture that sought the affirmation and admiration of man. So when Jesus speaks these words to this audience, it spoke directly to the culture of his time. But I want you to hear this today. It doesn't just speak to his time. It speaks directly to our culture. It speaks directly to our time. And that's, that's the powerful thing about God's word. When you read this Bible, and this is why you got to read it every day. When you read it, it's speaking directly to you. It's speaking directly to the culture that we live in, to the affairs that are going on in our nation. It speaks directly to us. As humans, we have, all of us, an innate desire to be seen. It doesn't matter whether you're extrovert or introvert. All of us admire, or we have a desire to be seen. We admire it. We want to be, receive the admiration from man. When you go on uh, social media, and social media figured this out, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and they became billionaires because of this. But when you, when you go on social media, on Instagram, and you make a comment, what do you do? You look and see, or you make a post, you look and see whether someone is going to comment about your post. And what happens when you get a lot of comments on your post or a lot of likes on a post that you made? Do you soberly think to yourself, man, I feel awful about all this attention. I need to delete this post right now. No, you kind of feel warm inside. You kind of feel a little bit of good. You feel good about yourself. You're like, man, people actually like me. They admire me. What happens when you make a post and you get no positive feedback, no good comments, no likes? <laughs> Try again. <laughs> you get insecure, do you not? You start thinking, does anyone like me? Does anyone think that, I, does anyone see that I'm here? Because all of us have an innate desire to be seen. But Jesus says, listen, he says, do not practice your righteousness in order to be seen by others. Don't give to be seen. Don't fast to be seen. Don't pray to be seen. Okay, so you may be thinking today, Ryan, I really don't do that. I don't go on social media and make posts about fasting or about my quiet time. Some people do, or about, about my prayer, or I don't go on social media and post gloomy pictures of myself of how awful I look like the Pharisees and how gloomy and terrible I feel for my fast, right, to show people how righteous I am. So no, you won't see that in today's world because that's not even really considered that honorable in today's world. We look at other things as more honorable. <laughs> We've kind of moved away from that culture, that day and age. But what you will certainly find is someone posting about social injustice going on in the world and how the church needs to stay woke. The church needs to wake up. The church needs to make it different, even though... That person has done absolutely nothing to bring social justice. They're just following the crowd. I was 
looking back in 2020 when the rise of social justice awareness was just exploding on social media. I was thinking about this, and uh, I, was, I remember in 2020 all this happening, and a few buddies of mine, I saw them posting, the church needs to stay woke. The church needs to wake up. It needs to bring social justice. And I don't disagree with that at all. But what I did disagree with was the ones who were posting about this. Because these same men, these same buddies of mine, were the same guys that I reached out to to join me to come into the inner city, to join South Point's character leadership program, to go into the inner city, to go reach the fatherless, to go help teach students, to go help give them jobs, to help Paul Orfield go get some carpool drivers and bring these students to church. These were the same exact people I was asking to join South Point's character leadership program, but they never showed up. And for you, other, you guys that don't know, so we had like a, when I was the youth pastor, we started a character leadership program in the inner city. We were at six different schools. Pastor Tyler still goes to some of them. But we were at six different schools, and we were, we were uh, reaching 20 to 40 students in each class at each of the schools. We were bringing them to the church every night. We had 60 carpool drivers that Paul Orfeld managed. We had 100 teachers teaching. It was a huge impact we were making. It was an amazing thing. And here I am asking these guys to come join, these people to come join me. But here now, they're posting, we need to wake up. We need to make a difference. I agree. But you need to make a difference. And, and what I realized is these guys making this post, they didn't care about these students. They didn't care about social justice. They just wanted to look like the social justice hero. Our world is seeking the praise of man. Or another thing that I see on social media that kind of drives me nuts. I'm guilty too, so I'm not saying I'm any better. But you know like when you're on social media, I call it super mom. She's posting every five minutes pictures of her children, and they're always smiling. They're always happy. Her house always looks staged and spotless. Everything is perfect. She's always coming up with creative ideas. Her family is one just flowing in the fruit of the Spirit all the time, just full of love, happiness, and joy. And you're looking at it, and you're going, man, I stink as a parent. I'm the most pathetic dad. I'm not present like that. I'm the most pathetic mom. I can't keep the house that clean. How do they do it? And then what do we do? We post pictures of our kids. And then what happens? We get some comments, and we're like, wow. People like what I'm doing. We're no different than super mom. We all have a desire to be seen. As humans, we simply love to be admired. I love when my two-year-old daughter, Millie, I drive home every, every day when I come home from work around five to six o'clock. Millie comes sprinting out of the driveway. She's first and she's running with her pigtails, running after me. And she, I was like, if I don't pay attention, Millie is just going to run right into the car. <laughs> she runs in. She wants to come drive the car, but she comes in I let her drive every day when I get home from work. She's just going all over the road when I get home. And so you guys are going, man, what a terrible parent. <laughs> hey, my kids will know what to do when it comes to taking the wheel, right? I'm training them right. I'm training them right now. So anyways, I love when my, my kids come running after me and say, Daddy, scream Daddy, all of them scream Daddy. When I came home this morning, went on a prayer walk, Got home and they all screamed, Daddy! I love when my kids come and show me all their dresses, their outfits. They're all showing me their new dresses today. I love that. I love when my four-year-old son comes in and he says, Daddy, you're super strong. <laughs> he doesn't say ER. He says, poor, super strong. Daddy, you're super strong. I love that. I love when people 
say, Ryan, you did a great job. You, 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 like, when I've done work, I love when people admire uh, me for my work. Not necessarily because I want praise from them, but because I feel loved. I feel loved when my children and my wife, it'd be a problem if my wife didn't admire me, right? <laughs> I love when they do this because I feel God's love pouring into me. So it's not necessarily wrong. This desire to be seen by others, I want you to hear this today, this desire to be seen by others is not necessarily wrong. I think where we go wrong is when we start to take this desire to be seen by others and we start to use it instead of receiving God's love, we start to use it to inflate our egos, to build up our pride, to think highly of ourselves. And we start to think, man, I'm a pretty good person. Like, for example, when Millie comes in running into my car and screams, Daddy, I'm not thinking to myself, I'm an amazing dad. <laughs> Look how my daughter submits to me and worships me. I'm pretty amazing. No, I'm thinking, man, I'm so happy that my daughter loves me. I'm filled with love that she loves me, that she admires me. But when someone gives me a compliment for my work and they say, Ryan, you did amazing on this. And I start to think, you know what? I am pretty amazing. <laughs> no, it's, it's, this is, it's not, it's, I'm saying it, but that's what's going on in our heads, is it not? I'm better than others at this. In fact, I may be the best human being on the planet. I don't know if there's anyone that can do what I do better than me. Right? And we start to think, man, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty awesome. We start to love that praise. We start to puff ourselves up. We start to feed our ego. When this happens, this is what we become. We become the very hypocrites that Jesus is talking about in this passage. Do not fast like the hypocrites. Do not pray like the hypocrites. Do not give like the hypocrites who do it in order to be seen by others. In Greek, the word hypocrite is simply the word in Greek theater for actor or performer. So what do we do when we start to long for that praise of man, when we start to long for the worship, long for the adoration of man, and we start to seek our own glory? We become an actor. We become a performer. And everything becomes fake. That's why I hate social media. Because we live in a world where we love the praises of man so much, we love admiration from others so much, we love our own glory so much, where we will do literally anything and everything just to put on a performance or an act so people will worship us. Instead of giving because we love that person and we want to help out that person in need, we want to be known as the generous giver. Instead of performing social justice because we really love these people, we're doing it now because we want to be looked at as a social justice hero. We do these things in order to be seen. The more glory that man seeks, the more fake he becomes. The more glory man seeks, the more fake he becomes. I don't have to prove this to you. You have Facebook and Instagram and Twitter to prove it to you. So now that we, before I get into this, but I want to say this. When Jesus says, go, get, go in secret, he's not saying, go pray fast and give where others can't see you. He's not saying, go do all your righteous acts where others can't see you. How could you be salt and light? Jesus did many miracles that thousands and thousands of people saw. He, he performed social justice acts. He gave to the poor. He prayed 
to his heavenly father, his, his disciples saw him constantly. So he's not saying that. He's saying don't do it in order to, in your heart, to receive the glory and praise of man. But do it because you love your heavenly father. So now that we understand what Jesus is saying, I want to look again at what Jesus says about prayer. Let's look at this. Verse 5. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, you have received, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Praise God. Amen. What is Jesus after? Don't seek the praise of man. But go to the secret and seek after your Father. And he who sees you in secret will reward you. What is Jesus ultimately after? When you look at all of the Sermon of the Mount, there's one overriding theme that Jesus is after. What is he after when we pray? He's after our hearts. Jesus is after your heart. He wants all of you. But when you pray like a hypocrite, when you are not real with God, when you're fake, when you're seeking admiration from someone other than God, your heart is divided. God doesn't have your full heart. He doesn't have your full devotion. He doesn't have all of you. God wants all of you when you come to him in your righteous acts. And specifically today in prayer, he wants all of you when you pray. When Jesus says, he says, when you pray, he says, don't be like the hypocrites. In other words, don't be an actor. Don't be a performer who is seeking praise and admiration of others. Praying like this completely defeats the whole purpose of prayer. Think about what prayer is. Think about what prayer is. Prayer is literally talking with the God of the universe. The very one who spoke creation into existence that created the beautiful skies that we see today, that fashioned and formed us in our mother's womb, intricately designed us, that holds us together in the palm of his hands, that is literally keeping oxygen in our lungs, blood flowing through our veins, that's making our hearts stay alive, that's making our minds stay alert, the very one doing all that, the very one that is expanding the universe faster than the speed of light at this very second. Prayer is getting to talk to that same God. It's not like you're simply sending, an e a lot of people look at prayers like you're sending an email to God, God will get back to me when he's not busy. That's not what it's like. It's more like when you're walking with your wife on the beach having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with her. Or you're talking with your best friend at Starbucks, one-on-one, -on -one, fully engaged. Or like I was thinking about this playing Legos with my son the other day, four-year-old son. And I was like, we're just having a fun conversation, talking about weird things like robots and, and dinosaurs and Whatever we are talking, I don't even know what we're talking about. We was just crazy. Nolan's mind is all over the place. He's so creative in his mind. But that's what it's like when you're talking to God. It is a direct prayer, is a direct one-on-one -on -one conversation with the God of the universe who is fully present with you. 
We will literally spend, as humans, we will spend thousands a minute to speak to a celebrity, our business guru. People will pay Jeff Bezos thousands a minute to speak to him. Yet at any time, any day, any moment, we can just go, forget all that. Lord, I'm going to talk to you. And he's right there in that moment talking to us. That's amazing. It's the greatest privilege, it's the greatest honor we could ever imagine in all of existence. That the God of the universe wants to be fully present with us in this moment. So what does God want? If that's what prayer is all about, about you being fully present with the God of the universe, he wants your heart. He wants all of you. He doesn't want you distracted. He doesn't want you seeking the admiration or loving something else when he wants you loving him. Prayer is about him having your whole heart, your attention being truly, fully on him. It's like this. The other day I was on the back porch doing some church work. We have a playground in our backyard that took me a thousand hours to build. I'll never do that again. I, I ordered a playground, uh, just a side note. I ordered a playground, I uh, didn't order it. I, we found it on Facebook Marketplace. But it didn't come, it came all discombobulated. All it was out of all the boxes, all the screws were out. It was a living nightmare. I had to find every screw and I didn't have them all, bo- all together and stuff, it was a nightmare. But anyways, Millie was on, that's another day. Millie was on this playground, going down the slide, my two-year-old daughter, going in the swing, she would twist herself up. You know how kids will twist themselves up in the swing and then spin around real fast, she was doing that, she kept on going, Daddy, watch me. I was like, I gotta get work done. She said, Daddy, watch me. Daddy, watch me. And I said, you know what, I love this. I love that this is kind of wasting my time because it's not really wasting my time right now. Daddy, watch me. She wanted me to watch her so much. Yeah. Millie was perfectly content, perfectly content with my admiration of her. Yeah. She didn't want any other thing. She wasn't distracted by any other thing. She didn't want anything but my attention. So and I loved it. And I know that our Heavenly Father loves it. Right. When we are completely content with his admiration for us. When my, when my daughters come in, this morning they all came in dressed and Shelby got them some new outfits because they outgrew theirs. They come all dressed pretty and they said, Daddy, look at me. Look at my dress. I was like, whoa, you look so pretty. God loves to give us that admiration. Just like I love it to give it to my daughters. Why do our children want our admiration? Why do they want, have you ever thought about that? Why do my children want me to look at them so much? Why don't they say it to their other siblings, look at me? Or why don't they say it to other people, look at me? They say it specifically to their parents. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Why is this? Start thinking about this. This is what I truly believe is the reason why. My wife gave birth to these children. I'm their father. There's no one in the world that loves those four children, Olivia, Darcy, Nolan, and Amelia, more than me and my wife. There's no human being on the planet. You can't love my children more than I. Now, I know God does that through adoption and other areas where parents neglect but there's no human being on the planet, I promise you, that loves my four children more than I do, more than my wife does. And because of this, this is what I truly believe, why our kids love our admiration so much as parents, is because we can give them, because we love them more than any other human being, when we love them, when we look at them, when we see them, they feel more love than any other person that can give them love. And it's the exact same with our Heavenly Father. You see, as parents, we can give a certain amount of love to our children, but our Heavenly Father 
can do that a thousand times over. So the reason why God loves to love us so much is because literally he is love. And the reason why we feel so much love coming from him is because the scripture says we love because he first loved us. We love because he first loved us, because he loved us so much. It makes us want more of him. So when you feel his love and his blessing and his just overwhelming shower of his love on your life, it's the most amazing thing on the planet. It's something that man could never give you. And God, he wants to pour this love on us because we're his children. So how do we pray in a way that we are fully present with God and he has our full heart and we are seeking his affirmation and adoration? Look what Jesus says. He says, first, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father in secret. Jesus is not commanding us to be incognito. He's not commanding us to go and hide and never perform any righteous acts in public, right? We know he's not saying to do that because Jesus was constantly seen doing these things in public. But I believe he's teaching us an important principle. In order to be fully present and for God to have your full heart and admiration when you pray, you must shut off every distraction in your life. Every distraction in your heart, in your mind, that keeps you from being fully present with God. You got to shut it off. He's not saying go and literally go and hide in the closet. He's saying shut off every distraction keeping you from being fully present with me. Shut it off. The other day, I, and this is on a very, Shelby will make sure I say this. Our kids hardly ever watch TV, but the other day, I came in from work. Usually when I come home, my kids come running to my car. Daddy! It's amazing. I hope they stay that way. I hope they don't become the teenage cool, too cool for school, where they never (laughs) admire anymore. But the other day, I, I drove in, and they didn't come out. I was like, what's happening? I walked in, and sure enough, there they were on the couch, Glued to the TV. Shelby had an emergency or something she had to do, or she had to take a break because she was exhausted. And they were watching TV. I came in. Hey, guys. (laughs) Guys, I'm here. Now I felt hurt. What did I do with that TV? (laughs) You ain't going to love that TV more than me. We're turning that off right now. So I shut that thing off. I was like, you guys need to play with daddy. (laughs) I hate TV. It ruins marriages. It ruins your kids. Teaches them bad ideologies, philosophy. <laughs> it does, man. Anyways, you got to shut off anything that distracts you from being present with God. Yeah. God wants you to shut it off. Yeah. Sometimes he'll shut it off for you. That's a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> when God shuts it off for you, yeah. God, what happened to my idol? Then you feel that conviction, that brokenness inside. Shut it off yourself so your father doesn't have to come in and turn the TV off. Shut it off. Get rid of the idols. Get rid of the distractions. When you pray, you got to be fully present with God. There's things in your life you you need to close the door on. The second thing Jesus says, he says, don't heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do who think they will be heard by their many words. So we know Jesus is not saying to pray short. He's not. Jesus didn't pray short. A lot of people, I hate when I see this in commentaries, 
This means you need to be sweet and to the point. What? Jesus spent 40 days in prayer and fasting. How's that short? Jesus spent whole nights in prayer. How's that short? Jesus literally told his disciples, wake up. Can you not tarry for an hour? The Bible says to pray without ceasing. This is not saying go pray short. A lot of people think, well, we just need to be short and to the point. These are all the C's in the room on the disc profile who have done growth track. Be short and to the point. Don't waste time, right? No. No, that is not what Jesus is saying. He's making another important point. Prayer is not about earning God's favor or performing so that he will love you more. The Gentiles would go before the, their pagan gods and they would worship and they would try to perform in order to receive more love, more blessing, more grace, more mercy. You don't have to do that with God. God's grace is more than enough. You just have to have the right perspective, the right view of who he is. When you have the right view of who God is, he's my loving father. He gave his very son for me. He gave his very life for me. He created me. He fashioned and formed me in my mother's womb. He intricately made me. He keeps me alive. He gives me the breath of my lungs. He supplies every need. He is my loving father. When you come to him like that, you come with humility. You come with reverence. You come with awe. But you come with this amazing desire to be close to him and to know him and to want to be all in with him for your heart to be fully connected with him because you know who he is. You've got to have the right view of who God is in your prayer time. That's what Jesus is saying. Yeah. Lastly, Jesus makes a little side note on forgiveness. And I just want to mention this. He says... When you pray, you have to forgive, or unless you forgive, your heavenly Father won't forgive you. And I think the reason why he makes this point, and he brings it later into the Lord's Prayer, we're going to find out in just a second. The reason why he makes this point is because the closer you get to God and you realize how amazing he is and your love for him, the more you realize of a sinner that you are. And you can't move further in your intimacy with God when there's unforgiveness in your heart, when there's sin in your heart, when there's idols in your heart that you need to let go and be forgiven of. You need to go before God and you need to ask for forgiveness. Have you ever tried praying after getting in an argument with your wife? Lord, I just pray right now that you'd move mightily in my neighborhood right after. Lord, I can't even pray. No, sometimes you won't even pray after a bad argument, will you? You need to go get forgiveness. Lord, forgive me for doing that. Forgive me for yelling. Lord, God, forgive my wife. <laughs> Lord, I pray that you'd forgive her so we can go before together to your presence and to your throne room. <laughs> amen, George. We got it. We got it. Amen. You gotta seek forgiveness. So how do we do this practically? Jesus shows us. First of all, Jesus makes six petitions. We're gonna go through this in just a second in the Lord's Prayer. The first three petitions are all about our adoration, our admiration of who God is and thankfulness of who he is in our life. So we start there in a posture of humility, a posture exalting his name, a posture of adoration, exalting him above every name. And then when we do that, it puts us into a position where it connects to the next three petitions, which all are connected to our need for God and the reward that he wants to give us. Let's break this down. He says, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In Greek, the word hallowed simply means to make your name holy, set it apart, sanctify your name. In other words, I, I, Lord, I want your name to be above every other name. Lord, you're more important to me than any other thing in this world. Lord, I lift your name up, not my name, but thy name. Be exalted above all, Lord God. Thank you for everything you've done in my life. We're going to get more into this in a second. Then he says, your kingdom come. In other words, Lord, I want you to sit on the throne of my heart. I want you to be first in my life. You're king of my life. You're Lord of my life. You're my everything. Your will be done. 
Lord, I'm surrendering. This is submission. It's surrendering to God's will in your life. It's submitting to him. You're exalting him and surrendering to his will in your life. Then he goes into the next, but before he goes into the next three points, I want you to see this. It's three petitions. It's three requests that he's making. Why is there, why are there petitions? I believe it's because, as we've been talking about today, as humans, we, t- we tend to shift away from being God-centered to me-centered. And this is reorienting, recentering our focus on what we need to be focused on. We're actually focusing on the one who wants to shower us with his love, his admiration, all of his goodness, all of his presence. And once you recenter yourself to that position in your prayer time, it will connect to him being the one who will provide for all your needs. We're going to get into that right now. Give us this day our daily bread. So we've now recentered ourselves. Now we go into our needs and the reward he wants to give us. Give us this day our daily bread. Notice this is daily bread. Not weekly bread, not monthly bread, daily bread. God wants us to come to him and consistently, constantly ask for his help. Just like you love when your kids come to you and ask for instruction. God wants you to come to him because he is your provider. He is the one that's going to supply every need. So when you come to him, guess what? He's going to supply every need. And I want to make this, I say this in Grow Track, but the more specific the request, God wants to fulfill all your spiritual and physical needs, but the more specific the request, the more specific the answer. When you come to the Lord and you're specific, he wants to give you his blessing. He wants to reward you, praise God. So you come to him with your daily needs. Forgive us our sins. Now, we're asking God to forgive us our sins. Lord, forgive me for my pride. Forgive me for my jealousy. Forgive me for my lust. Forgive me for the things that separate me from you, from being focused on you. Forgive me for the idols. Forgive me for not trusting in you. And what what happens when we start to ask for forgiveness, what forgiveness is all about is making our hearts healthy and whole. It's about making new life happen inside of us, regeneration sanctification inside of us, and Jesus begins to wash us clean. Lord, I go before you, and I come cleansed. Do you see the reward? And then the last one is lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. God wants to lead you into victory. Lord, thank you that you lead me into victory. Lead me to overcoming sin in my life. Lead me over temptation. Help me to be victorious in you, and God will lead you to victory. God wants to give you these things. He wants to be your provider. Money can't provide for you. God wants to be your provider. He wants to forgive you of your sins. He wants to break those strongholds in your life. He wants to lead you to victory every time where you're not constantly falling into sin and temptation. He's just waiting on you to need him. He wants you to need him. So to finish up, and thank you, Caitlin. But to finish up, I want to show you what prayer looks like practically. We're going to be done. But before I do, I just want to make this one comment from Mark 135. It says this. This is talking about Jesus praying. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Okay, there's three quick points for your prayer time that I want you to to just jot down that so you can remember just or just remember this just listen first of all do it early in the morning just like Jesus do it early in the morning if you wait to pray and read your bible after morning you'll if you don't put god first you'll put him last and if you put him last you won't have energy to give to god bring god the first fruits of your day Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So do it first thing in the morning. Secondly, find a solitary place of no distraction. Jesus went off into the wilderness. He went into Mount of Olives. He went into Garden of Gethsemane. He constantly was going out into the wilderness away from all distraction. If you have kids, you need to get out of the house. 
If you're a mom, you need to have the husband like go take the kids for a while or wake up a little bit early. Do something where you can pray alone. If you're a dad, maybe you like me, I got to get out of the house. My son wakes up at 6.30 every morning, so I'm out of the house. I'm on a prayer walk. I love to go to a park nearby. It's my favorite place to pray. It's praying there this morning. It's an incredible, no people around. I can pray out loud. And when you pray, please pray out loud. God wants you to talk to him. Don't just pray in your mind. He wants you, he gave you a body and lips and, and a mouth, a tongue to talk to him. And a mind, pray with all those. And then use a track. Our minds tend to wander. So Jesus, thankfully, gave us a track. So here it is. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So how do you, I'm just going to show you exactly how I would do it. It's just summed up super quick. Hallowed be thy name. So what would I do in this? Lord, hallowed be thy name. Thank you, Lord. You're amazing, God. So I'd pull up in my Bible to Psalm 103. And this is what I would do. Hallowed be thy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity. Praise God. Lord, I thank you that you forgive me of all my iniquity. Lord, you forgive me of all my sin, all my pride, all my desire for the praise of man. Thank you, Lord who heals you of all your diseases. Thank you, Lord, that you healed me of COVID. Thank you that you kept me from cancer. Thank you that you healed my broken bones, that you protected our family, you protected my children. Thank you that you're our healer who redeems your life from the pit. Lord, you're my redeemer. You purchased my freedom by your blood. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for redeeming me. I was dead in my sins. You redeemed me, Lord, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Lord, thank you that you satisfy all my needs. You're my provider. You take care of me, Lord. All you're doing is taking the word of God and you're taking a psalm like Psalm 103 and you're exalting the name of God. You're using the word of God to lift him up, to exalt his name. The sacrifice that God wants, Psalms 50 says, is the sacrifice of thankfulness. And Psalm 51 is the sacrifice of a broken and contrite heart. God wants you to love him. He wants your heart. Your kingdom come. Then I go into your kingdom come. Your will be done. Lord, may your rule and reign take place in my heart. Lord, may you be the king of my life. Lord, I pray that you would be first in my life. May your kingdom come and your will be done in my family, in my and my wife. Help her to become more like you, Lord Jesus. Help her to seek first your kingdom. Help my children to honor you, to serve you, to obey you. Help them to make you the king of their lives in Jesus' name. May you sit as king on the throne of their hearts. You see, you're just praying to the Lord, just giving him, just going through the Lord's prayer. Your will be done. Lord, I surrender to your will. And I like to go, you can get, learn more about this in Grow Track. I'm not going to go all, over all that. But I like to go through head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Lord, I surrender my thoughts to you today. Your will be done. My eyes, my ears, my tongue. You just go through your whole being surrendering to the Lord. Surrender to his rule and reign. Lord, I pray for my neighbors that your kingdom would come, your will would be done in their lives. Lord, I'm going to invite them to Fall Fest. I pray that they would come in Jesus' name. I pray that they'd be saved in Jesus' name. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, thank you that you provide for all my needs. Money is not going to provide success at my job. You're all I need. I'm content with you, Lord. Thank you for my family. Thank you for my wife, my kids. Thank you for my home. Thank you for everything you've done in my life, Lord Jesus. You're my provider. I don't need anything else. And then be specific. What is it that you need prayer for specifically? I'm not going to go into that. I've already said that. Forgive me my sins, Lord, as I forgive others. Forgive us our sins, Lord, not just mine. Lord, you you desire, and I'd go through Psalm 51 sometimes on this. Lord, you desire broken and contrite heart, Lord. Lord, I want to be close to your presence again. Forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my children's sin. Help them to turn to you. Lord, I give them give everything to you. 
Lead us not into temptation, Lord. I thank you that you're going to lead me to victory today. And what I'd like to do, and what I usually do right here is I'll go through the, the uh, Ephesians chapter 6, the armor of God, praying it over my life. Thank you, Lord, yes. that you're going to bring victory. Cover me with the helmet of salvation, the blessed breastplate of righteousness, the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the sword of the Spirit. Lord, give me victory today in your name, Lord Jesus. Help me to overcome my doubt. Help me to overcome my unbelief. Help me to overcome my fear of man. Help me to overcome my lust today. In Jesus' name, lead me to victory. Lead me to victory. If you will do this, it will transform your prayer life. And I close with this. What is the reward? Jesus says three times, don't do it to be seen by others, but pray, give, fast in order to be seen by your Father, and he who sees you in secret will reward you. So what is the reward? The reward is this. My heavenly Father, sees me. And because he sees me, I feel more affirmation. I feel more love than I've ever felt in my whole life. I don't need that promotion. I don't need that praise. I don't need that money. He's going to meet every need of mine. Because he's seen me. He wants to provide for all my needs. He wants to bless me beyond anything I could ever imagine. He's the father that loves me. He forgave me. He gave him his, him, his son for me. Because he sees me. I have all the provision I need. I have all the forgiveness I need. I have all the victory I need. Because he sees me. And when you get to that point... In your prayer time, there's nothing stopping you from being overflown, overflowed with the love and presence of Yahweh to the point where you just break down in tears because God has your entire heart. Yes. He wants our hearts, South Point. He wants our hearts. Will you give him your heart today? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for showing us how to pray. Thank you, Lord, for showing us that we don't have to seek admiration from something other than you. You're the Heavenly Father that made us and who loves us more than any human being, more than anything in this world you love us. And because you love us so greatly, Lord, you desire to shower us with endless, amazing love. So, Lord, change us today. Help us to leave this room as new creation. And if you're in this room today and you're going, Ryan, I don't know the Father. I don't hear his voice. It's time to surrender your life to Jesus so that you can know the love of the Father. Lord God, we want all of you. We surrender our hearts to you today. Lord God, bring a revival in this city as our souls catch on fire for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, before we leave today, we're going to take up the offering. And I just want to say thank you for your faithfulness. Just like prayer is an act of adoration. And just like Jesus talked about in this passage, when you give, don't do it to be seen by others. And then Jesus is not saying don't physically be seen. He's saying, do it because you love me. Do it because you love me. 
So when you give today an offering, do it because you love God and worship him today and be fully present with him. So I want to say thank you again for being generous. Because of what you guys do, we get to do things like what we're, what's happening for Fall Fest all free tonight. Because you're sowing into the kingdom. Lives are being transformed. And God is going to reward you. He is. He promises right here. He is going to reward you. And that doesn't necessarily mean that God's going to bless you with a, a, a breakthrough in your stock market account or your mutual funds. He's not going to, that doesn't, that's not what he's saying. He said, I'm going to be your blessing. I'm going to be your provider. I'm going to take care of all your needs. I'm going to be your contentment. Yes. That's how we need to give to our Heavenly Father. So thank you for doing that. So there's multiple ways you can give today. You can give online um, through the South Point website, or you can give through the app on your phone, or you can text South Point CC to 77977, or you can give through cash or check, and there's a box in the back to do that. So thank you for giving. Let's pray over this offering. Lord Jesus, thank you so much, Lord God, that you have supplied every need, that you meet, as Josh said earlier, you meet every need according to the riches found in the glories of Christ Jesus. Well, God, you are rich. You are our heavenly Father. You meet every need. So, Lord, we give this as an offering to you, acknowledging that you are first in our life. And because you are our Father, when we look to you and we give because we love you, Lord, I thank you that you supply every need of ours. Lord, use this money to build your kingdom. Use it to do kingdom work. Lord, thank you that you're going to do something mighty tonight at Fall Fest. Lord, I thank you, Lord God, that there's going to be a breakthrough of lost souls coming into your kingdom as they feel your love and are showered with your grace. And as we have a blast tonight, a spiritual family, and as so many of us come to serve, Lord, I pray that you'd bless the labor of our hands. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, as Pastor Jason was saying, or Pastor Tyler was actually saying earlier, we need help setting up for Fall Fest. So if any of you would like to stay around for about 45 minutes to an hour after service and help us set up, that would be great. Now, if there's cars in parks, places <laughs> where we have to set up, you may have to move your car if you're staying here to set up. But please help us set up. And, uh, and if not, go invite your neighbors. There's still time, like Tyler said. Go invite your neighbors. You guys have a wonderful afternoon. We will see you tonight at 6.30 p.m. <laughs>